In this video, we're going to look at the kind of basics of ionic bonding, what it is and how to visualize it. Okay. And I'm going to leave this little thing over here on the side the whole time, just to kind of remind us that two negatives, if you had two, two like negatively charged ions, if they were next to each other, they would repel each other. They don't want to be near each other. Okay. If you had two positive ions next to each other, two cat ions next to each other, they would repel each other. They don't want to be near each other. But if I had a negative and positive ion, if I had a cat ion and an anion, they would be attracted to each other. Okay, they would come together. And that's exactly what ionic bonding is. Okay, it is the attraction, it is the bond between a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion. Okay, and you can think about this like a like a magnet, right? So imagine you had a magnet. I'm sure you've done this because we were all kids at one time, right? So if you have two magnets and you try to push them together, but you have them the wrong sides put together, it doesn't matter how hard you try and push those magnets together, they're going to repel each other, right? Because negatives don't want to be with each other, positives don't want to be with each other. But if you flip that one magnet around, they will very easily, right? They are attracted to each other, they will connect. This is exactly what ionic bonding is, okay? So ionic bonding is <laughs> exactly what it says in the name. Uh, my cat is perfect. Thank you, Marvel. Oh, God. All right. Uh, ionic bonding is exactly what it says it is. It is a bond between ions. Okay. It's ionic bonding. So uh, ions bond together. Okay. They are attracted to one another. And there's two kinds of ions, right? Just... To refresh, we have the cat ions and the an ions, the positively charged ions and the negatively charged ions. Maybe I should write out the whole thing. Ion, ion. Okay. All right, so cations and anions are attracted to each other and they will form a bond. All right. And ionic bonding is the strongest of the bonds. Okay, so we're going to talk about ionic and covalent bonding. And then we're going to talk about intermolecular forces. We'll get there eventually, okay? But ionic bonding is the strongest, okay? So the attraction between that positive ion and that negative ion coming together, they are going to be held together very tightly. It takes a lot of energy to break an ionic bond, okay? So they are super strong. Number one thing that I hate about most, uh, <laughs> most people's kind of background talking about ionic bonding is that in the past, you may have heard about you know, ionic bonding is about stealing electrons, okay? Someone steals electrons from someone else. I really don't want you to think about it that way because uh, that implies that one, one party is getting screwed, okay? And that's not how it is with ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is a transfer of electrons, okay? A full transfer of electrons from one atom to another. So it is a, an absolute full transfer of electrons to form ions. And both the cation and the anion are happy about this arrangement, okay? No one is stealing from anybody else. They're both happy. And I almost forgot. Ionic bonding is cations bonding to anions, right? So this means you're going to have metals bonding to non-metals. Metals bonding to non-metals. So if you see a compound that has a metal, you know right away, ionic bond. Okay, if you're looking at a compound and there's no metals whatsoever, almost always that's going to be a covalent bond. The only thing I can think of is ammonium makes a cation, NH4. Okay, both nitrogen and hydrogen are non-metals, but ammonium is a cation, all right? That's the only one I can think of that breaks this rule. Other than that, you're always going to have a metal cation and a non-metal anion. All right. And let's actually look at that, okay? So I think the easiest way to do it is to just draw out a Bohr model of what the heck is going on. This is why I think it's so important for you to understand Bohr models beforehand, okay? So if you're going to look at salt, just regular old table salt, okay? You go to your table and you ch 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 some salt. This is what you would have. You would have sodium chloride, Na bonded to Cl. And if I look at my beautiful periodic table... Sodium is right here on the third period and in the first column. So it's going to have three electron shells. It's on the third period down. And it's going to have one electron in that valence shell. Okay. And chlorine all the way over here 
is going to have also three shells, one, two, three, and it's going to have seven valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, let's draw that out. So we have our Bohr drawings of sodium and chlorine, okay? But now I want to have them bond together to make sodium chloride, okay? And hopefully you can kind of see what's going to happen, all right? So remember that atoms want to be stable according to my octet rule, right? They want to have eight electrons in their valence shell. Well, right now, sodium is like, dear God, I have this one electron on my valence shell. I hate him. I wish he would go away. If he went away, if I could just get rid of this one electron, then there's nothing on my third shell. So then the third shell kind of disappears. And then you only have two shells for sodium. And the second shell is full. And sodium has a full valence shell. Okay. So sodium is like desperate. Please, God, get rid of this one electron. I hate you your baggage, go away. Chlorine, on the other hand, right? Two electrons in his first shell, eight in his second, but seven in his third. Chlorine is like desperate, crying out, please, someone send me an electron. I am dying over here, right? If he could just get one electron to fit right here, then he would have a full valent shell. So of course, what's going to happen is sodium is going to give his valence electron to chlorine. Chlorine's going to accept that valence electron. I get a full transfer of electrons. All right, so this electron comes here for chlorine, and this electron is no longer on sodium's third shell, which means there is no third shell for sodium anymore. Sodium now has a full shell on the inside. Okay. Okay. So the best way that I can think to show this, right? So sodium completely transfers his electron to chlorine and then this third shell, there's nothing on it, right? So it's not there anymore. There are no electrons on that third shell. And now sodium has two full shells, right? Two full electron shells. It's valence shell is full. And chlorine also is very happy and stable now because his third shell is full all right but there's something that happened with the charges right sodium gave up an electron right so this electron went away so it lost a negative thing so if you lose negative things you become more positive right think about it like life okay if you get rid of all the negativity in your life you become more positive so you're getting rid of these negative electrons you become more positive sodium lost one electron so sodium's gonna have a plus one charge. And then over here, chlorine gained a negative thing. Chlorine gained an electron. So he's going to have a minus one charge. Your sodium ion, your sodium positively charged cation, is going to be attracted to the negatively charged ion of chlorine. Okay, so I have my cation and my anion that are attracted to each other, and they're going to do one of these. They're going to be attracted to each other. They're going to zzz, they're going to be right next to each other because they're attracted, positive and negative, attracted to each other. Okay, this is what salt looks like. You're going to have, I'll draw you something. So you're going to have sodium with the plus charge attracted to chlorine with the minus charge. So you have these two ions, cation and anion, bonded together because of their attraction between the pl plus and minus. Okay, so it's a little bit easier if you only do your Lewis dot structure instead of drawing out your full Bohr structure. Okay, I just think for concept, for understanding how and why this happens, Bohr structure is great, okay? But you don't have to. You could just do Lewis dot structure and see the exact same thing, okay? So the sodium 
is going to donate his electron right here to chlorine, which means this sodium is going to be Na with a plus. This, oh, wrong color, sorry. This chlorine now has a minus charge, and these two are connected, okay? This would be my Lewis dot structure drawing of ionic bonding, okay? And even though sodium, now that it got rid of that electron, it has a full valence shell on the inside, right, like this, we, d we still don't draw out those eight valence electrons, okay? Just by convention, because this shows us, aha, it made a positive charge, it got rid of an electron. So by not drawing anything around, I'm basically showing that I got rid of that last shell. I got rid of that initial valence shell. That's why we kind of leave it blank. But chlorine, if you're drawing the Lewis dot structure, okay, you do draw out all eight to show that I made a full valence shell and that's why it's a minus charge. That's the Lewis dot structure of it. Okay, if you were just gonna draw your ions of it, you would just have Na plus, attracted to Cl minus, okay? And if you're just drawing the compound, all right? So this would show me the ions. This would show me Lewis dot, all right? So we're just kind of breaking it down, right? Here's the Bohr model, the Lewis dot transfer, the Lewis dot model, the ion model, and then what we actually have when we're like looking in our book, is we don't actually draw out the plus and minus charge in your chemical compounds. Okay, so once you actually make an ionic compound, you don't include your plus and minus charge anymore, okay? All right, so we're not including your plus or your minus charge for your cations and anions. Once you make your full ionic compound, you're just showing this cation is attracted to that anion. Let's do some more examples, okay? Because this was a one-to-one -one transfer, right? Sodium needed to get rid of one electron, chlorine wanted to gain one. What happens when it's not like that, okay? What happens if I wanna make calcium oxide, all right? And we'll talk about how to name all this stuff later, all right? But if I wanna make calcium oxide, what I would do is I'd start with my Lewis dot structure. I don't wanna to have to draw Bohr structures for everything, okay? So calcium is right here in my alkaline, has a two plus charge, right? So that he would have two Vans electrons. Oxygen, right here, should have six valence electrons. He should want to make a two minus charge. Put it right, six, one, two, three, four, five, six valence. We can see what's going to happen, probably, okay? So calcium wants to make a two plus charge. It wants to get rid of these two electrons. It's gonna donate one electron here and donate one electron here to oxygen. And oxygen's like, oh, dear God, thank you, calcium. Thank you for that transfer. I, it's exactly what I needed. Okay, so calcium is going to make a one, two plus charge because it got rid of two electrons. Oxygen now has a full valence shell of eight and it has a two minus charge, right? This is me showing my Lewis dot. If I wanted to show just the ions, calcium with a two plus bonding to oxygen with a two minus, and then if I want to show my actual chemical compound, right, my ionic compound would be CaO. All right, for how, this is the chemical formula for calcium oxide, and this is how I would bond it. This is still easy because calcium gave away two and oxygen wanted that too. What if it gets worse? So in this case, sodium's right here in column one, one valence electron, and oxygen we just looked at. five and six, Ugh. okay, ignore that. Okay, so I have sodium and I have oxygen, okay? Sodium wants to donate, so it's going to donate an electron right here, all right? Now this sodium is happy, hooray! But oxygen still is not, right? Now oxygen only has seven valence electrons. So even though this sodium is stable, this oxygen is not, which means we're not done yet, okay? What I would need to do in this situation is I'd, I'd need to figure out what I can do to make sure both ions are stable, right? To make sure that both elements are gonna form stable ions, which means I need another electron donated to that oxygen. The only way I can do that is I need another sodium. So 
So now I have another sodium, which has another electron. This electron is going to be donated here to oxygen. And now everybody is happy and stable. Okay. So I'm going to have Na with a plus charge. Another Na with a plus charge. I'm going to have this two sodiums here. And now I have oxygen with a full valence shell and one, two minus. Okay, you'll notice that I have two pluses and two minuses. My ionic compound is electrically neutral, right? The amount of positives and negatives I have even out. Perfect, okay? So if I wanted to draw this, if I wanted to write this out as an ionic compound, okay, I would say I have sodium. And how many of them do I have? Well, I have one, two sodiums. So I have Na2. And then I have an oxygen. Okay. So Na2O. This is how I would write out sodium oxide. All right. This two does not mean what the charge is of sodium, right? Because the charge of sodium is a one plus. This tells me how many. So please... Just be careful with your subscripts and your superscripted charges. Don't get these flip-flopped, okay? Your subscripts tell you how many there are. Your superscript tells you what charge it has. Calcium chloride, okay? So calcium, second column, so two valence electrons. Chlorine, all the way over here at seven. Chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so calcium is going to donate an electron right here to chlorine, and chlorine's happy and stable. Yay, but calcium isn't, right? Calcium still has this one electron to give away. It's freaking out. It needs somewhere else to donate this electron. The only other thing I can do is add another chlorine. And now calcium can donate that last electron, and now everybody's happy. So I have calcium here with a two plus charge. It gave away two electrons. And I have a chlorine with a minus one charge. And I have another chlorine with a minus one charge. Which means if I was going to make my full ionic chemical compound, I have calcium and there's only one of them. And I have chlorine and I have one, two of them. So I have CaCl2, okay? One calcium, two chlorines. All right, hopefully that makes sense, all right? What I would really suggest you do is, is run through that ionic simulation. That'll really help you with figuring out, you know, how many of the positives, how many of the negatives do you need to pull together to make ionic compounds, all right? Good luck. <laughs>